Should we do it? Should we get right to it? I mean, we're 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 only uh, you know twenty some odd minutes into the show. I, I feel like I I I feel like you're asking for it. I feel like you gotta know. I mean, it's it's Friday. There's so much going on. I, we still gotta get to the Heat. There's a lot going on with the Heat. We got the Knicks tonight. Kyle Lowry. I, I mean, this guy. Get the. I can't wait till this guy gets the hell out of my city. But I feel like. You're saying to yourself right now, Zaslo, I gotta know. Is it a big game? Or is it not a big game? Yes! Big game or not a big game? Let's get to it here. We gotta let you know what's going on this weekend. How are you gonna spend your time? There's so much action. Lots of action. Let's start things off. Tonight, 8 p.m., Bally Sports Sun. Not to be confused with Bally Sports Florida, who always has technical problems. I don't know why there's a difference. I know Bally sucks. Bally Sports Sun, though, they're okay. Heat hosting the New York Knicks. Now, the Heat, they may be without Jimmy Butler. They're definitely without Kyle Lowry because he's quit. Because he conned the Heat out of $90 million. But you may not have Jimmy tonight. The Heat find themselves 7th in the East. They are a game and a half out of number 6, which is landsliding Brooklyn. But the Heat can't possibly feel so good about them. And tonight, you got a New York Knicks team. The only team hotter than them in the entire NBA are the 16th straight win Milwaukee Bucks. The Knicks have won 7 in a row. They're a season best 10 games over 500. The Knicks are... Knocking on the door at number four, Cleveland. They're one back of them. The Knicks are number five. The Heat, number seven. We hate the Knicks here. I mean, now it's not the same as it used to be, but a good Knicks team lends a really fun atmosphere. If you're going to the game tonight, there's going to be a lot of Knicks fans there. The Heat desperately need a win. You don't want to start this homestand 0-2. Very difficult. You know this is a very difficult six-game homestand. You're going to start 0-2, and and then you got four straight against Atlanta twice and Cleveland twice. No, I need that in my life. Tonight, Knicks at Heat. That's a big game. Yup, you know that. You know tonight's a big game. All right, let's move on to tomorrow. Saturday, 6 p.m., Bally Sports, Florida. Pittsburgh Penguins at your Florida Panthers. Now, by tomorrow... Panthers may look like a different team. I don't know if it's going to be drastically different, but I think they're going to be sellers today. Certainly do not believe they're going to be buyers. They are five points back right now against this Penguin team. The Penguins have two games in hand. Tomorrow's a monster game. If the Panthers don't beat Pittsburgh tomorrow, it doesn't mean that they're not going to catch one of the wildcard spots, but it could mean they're not going to catch Pittsburgh if you fall seven points back and they have two games in hand. You need a win tomorrow, you'll be three back with two games, with them having two games in hand. Do you get Barkov back? Look, we spoke to Jessica Blaylock the other day. It, it doesn't sound like there are any answers about Barkov right now. It's really disappointing. Same thing with Sam Bennett. But again, what does this Panther team look like tomorrow after this afternoon's trade deadline? Penguins at Panthers. That's a big game. Yeah, I, I hesitated. Because I'm not confident. But it's a big game. We're hanging on by, by, by a thread to a possible playoff spot. All right, let's keep it moving here. I know what everybody's thinking. Saturday, 6 p.m. ACC Network. Number 25 ranked men's basketball team in the country, Pitt Panthers. At the number 16 ranked Miami Hurricanes men's basketball team. This is what they call for all of the marbles. Well, not really. I'm hyping it up, okay? But we know the ACC regular season championship is on the line here. That's right. The Canes, they were given a gift last week when Virginia lost. Both Pitt and Miami are 14-5. and five. If the Canes win tomorrow, they win the ACC regular season championship. How about that? When you think of it now, the Canes would have beaten FSU last week instead of lost uh, instead of lost at the buzzer. You'd be a game up on Pittsburgh right now, 
but you would still need this game tomorrow because if Pitt would have won, you'd be even and they'd be 2-0 in the season series. So it's not, the FSU game was annoying last week, but it doesn't even matter. You still need to win this game tomorrow against Pete, uh, against Pitt. Sold out Watsko Center. I saw that. Great job by the Kane fan. They've been showing up this last part of the season. So tomorrow, a Hurricane team that's looking to win the ACC regular season championship. And then if you could win the ACC tournament, you, I don't know that they're going to be a number one seed in the NCAA uh, tournament at that point. I mean, they're the number 16 ranked team in the country right now. You can't, you got to jump into like top five, top six in the country if you're going to wind up grabbing a number one seed, all right? Which maybe they'd have been able to do if they wouldn't have lost FSU last week. But that's over with. That's neither here nor there. Just take care of the business that's in front of you. It'll go a long way toward that seeding in the NCAA tournament for the March Madness. Number 25, Pitt. At number 16, Miami. That's a big game. You know it. I'm, what, this Saturday's crazy and we're only halfway through what we got going on there. Saturday, 7.30. Bally Sports Sun. I already told you, if you don't want to watch on television and you want to go to the game... Come see me tomorrow afternoon, Broward Meat and Fish Grand Opening in Margate. I got two pairs of tickets for Heat at Hawks. I'll be giving them away. Come see me tomorrow afternoon. All you got to do, you walk up to the Johnny Cuba tent. Yo, Zaslow, let's have a beer together. You got any more tickets? Yes, my friend. Let's have a beer. Here's a pair of tickets. Go take your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband. I don't know what you got going on, but have a great time. That's tomorrow. Hawks at Hawks. Heat, are the Heat going to be coming off of a win tonight against the Knicks? I don't know. The Hawks, they got a new coach. It seems that everybody hates Trey Young. It's the start of two straight at Miami Dade Arena against Atlanta. That's a big game. Yep, that's a big game. All right, we're not even through Saturday yet. Saturday, 7.30, Apple Plus. That's how you get the MLS games now. Philadelphia Union at Inter-Miami. Inter-Miami, a great opening last weekend. They beat Montreal 2-0. Now you got Philadelphia. I'm pretty sure they were good last year also, just like Montreal was. So tomorrow night, can Inter-Miami start their campaign 2-0 for the first time in franchise history? They started 1-0 for the first time in franchise history. Now, I don't know if you know, I'm an inaugural season ticket holder for Inter-Miami. Yeah, that's right. But there's so much going on. So I'm giving tickets to my buddy. We split the tickets. But hey, you know I'm going to have it on. At that point, 7.30. All right, the Panthers are still going on. Yeah, you got the Canes. How are we going to watch all these games? There's literally going to be four things going on at once. The Panthers start at 6. Hurricanes are at 6. So I got those going on at the same time. Then the Heat are going to get going at 7.30. Then you got into Miami 7.30. But it's on Apple Plus, so it's not like you can record that. Might have to record the heat and put it on the TV after Panthers and, and Miami Hurricanes end. That's crazy day. All right. But anyway, Philadelphia at Inter-Miami. That's a big game. Yep. I'm an August season ticket holder. We're not done with Saturday yet. Saturday night, 10 p.m. Better get a nap. Pay-per-view. UFC 285. The main event is the return of maybe the greatest ever. John Bones Jones taking on Cyril Gaon. This, come on now. John Jones' return, he's fighting at heavyweight. He's significantly bigger. Cyril Gaon is on, uh, he's undefeated. This is a major, major UFC 285 main event. John Jones only a slight favorite. And I got to tell you, moving up to heavyweight, he's been out of the octagon for so long. I think Cyril God's going to win. I think John Jones... I, and John Jones has one loss, but it was by DQ. He was disqualified because he came down with the elbows 12-6, to 6, and, like, the guy had bloody eyeballs. So, John Jones really has never lost. I think he's going to lose tomorrow. UFC 285. That's a big game. Got one more for you, ass. Let's move to Sunday. Sunday, 7 p.m., pay-per-view all elite wrestling revolution this is a major major card huge night for aew 
Make sure you listen to our AW Revolution preview show. It dropped last night under Zaslow Show 2.0. It's still real to me. Make sure you tune in tomorrow. Busted Open Sirius XM Channel 156 Fight Nation. Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. to noon, I will be hosting along with the great Tommy Dreamer. Sunday night, though, AEW Revolution, two major main events. One of them, you got a Texas death match. John Moxley is disgusting. He bleeds everywhere every match. Hangman Page, man, I want Hangman to win. The other main event is for the AEW world title. A 60-minute Iron Man match. You got Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, top Jew, against Brian Danielson. This is a monster card. Those are the two main events. AEW Revolution, that's a big game. Everything I gave you there was a big game. And that right there is a big time addition. A big game or not a big game. Wow. That was, I, everybody, everybody take, everybody settle down. I gotta catch my breath. Take it easy, everybody. Whew. What a weekend we're in store for. Now, of course, don't worry, I got Big Movie, not a big movie coming up in a little bit, all right? But everybody's got to calm down for a second. So let's get to the Heat here. The Heat have the Knicks tonight. And then you got, so the Heat right now, I, it doesn't feel like you're going to catch the Knicks. <coughs> but the Heat right now find themselves, what are we talking, one game back of Brooklyn right now? Uh, two games, actually. Game and a half, technically, but two games back in the loss column. Here's what the Heat are going to have to start to worry about. Because if the Heat lose tonight to New York, and I don't feel good about it, then you're even in the loss column with Atlanta. And then your next two games here at home are against Atlanta. Before you know it, in a few days from now, if the Heat are not careful. I said this a few days ago. Going into the game at Philadelphia when the Heat had lost four in a row at that point. The game at Philadelphia. If you're not careful, this ship is going to start to sink. You've lost four in a row. And now you got Philadelphia and then a very difficult six-game homestand. Well, the Heat snapped the four-game skid at Philadelphia. Then they lost to Philly. And now Jimmy Butler might be out tonight against New York. If you're not careful, in a few days from now, you could be sitting at number eight. And depending on what Toronto does, <coughs> because Toronto's been playing much better despite losing last night. You, hey, the Wizards are only two losses back of Miami. I'm telling you. If the Heat are not careful, you could find yourself in 10th. It, by, by this time next week, you could find yourself in 10th. You think I need that shit in my life? So this, this, this is, that's why I said it's a big game. All right? That's why you know it's a big game tonight against New York. This is a very big stretch. Anyway, as far as the Heat go tonight, Jimmy Butler might not play. Kyle Lowry's been ruled out indefinitely. What the hell is going on here? Now, I'm not going to tell you that I want Kyle Lowry back. I'm fine with him being out. I'm fine with him not playing. I don't want him ever playing for the Heat again. But yesterday, you get the report now from Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald. Despite flying up to Philly, meeting the team there, questionable to play in the game, he went through practice, then was ruled out, did not play on Monday, flies home with the team, and has now been ruled back to out, and he's out indefinitely. What the hell happened? I mean, did he actually fly up to Philadelphia to meet the team there just to see his family? His family lives in Philly. He's got family in Philly. He's from there. Did he actually fly up to Philly? Tell the Heat I think I could play? Because he just wanted to go visit his family? Like, is that really what happened? Because it kind of feels like it. And now, not only is he out, but he's out indefinitely. And this comes, what are we talking, a, a couple weeks after the trade deadline, when the Heat did not make a trade for a point guard. I mean, maybe Westbrook, look, the Clippers are not one with him yet, so I'm not necessarily talking about Westbrook. But the Heat didn't acquire a, a, a point guard because they were apparently confident in Lowry returning, and now he's out indefinitely? I mean, this dude is stealing $90 million from the Heat. Stealing it. And I told you, I don't want him back. But the problem is, he has totally duped the organization. He's clowned the Heat, right? That's what it feels like. Yesterday on the Levitard show, I told you, 
I've never disliked a player more than Kyle Lowry. Oh, but what? No. Rip. You disagree now? I can't wait till the day comes that this guy gets the hell out of my city. It can't come soon enough. I don't want to see him play. But it bothers me that it feels like he duped the franchise. And all right, and you already know how I feel. I mean, he, he hugged and kissed more Sixer players after the game a couple of nights ago than games played this season. You know that. He, he is impossible to like. I mean, like, let him not return this season. There's no way he's on the team next year, right? He just can't be. Oh, man. Why, how could anyone disagree with him being the most unlikable player that he'd have ever had? And I stand strong on the white side thing, man. Like, he was a mope. But you tell me he gets you a double-double. Doesn't help a little bit, at least. Helps a little bit. And like Levitard mentioned Antoine Walker yesterday, I will say this about Antoine Walker. I've never been more uncomfortable for a player on my team than I was Antoine Walker back then. And this is back in the 2007 season when the Heat were defending champions and it was a really rough year and they got swept out of the first round by the Bills, by the Bulls. It'd be really embarrassing if the Bill, if Buffalo Bills swept the Heat. But I've never been more uncomfortable for a player than I was Antoine Walker when, you know, he was getting boo birds throughout the season and there was one moment where he missed a tippy-toe three from straight away. And it was one of those where he's about to shoot and go, no, no, like the crowd's doing that. And then he airballed it and just raining booze on him. I was so uncomfortable for him. I felt so bad for him. But here's the thing. Go look at what Antoine Walker did in the playoffs in 2006. Go look at how he performed in the finals in 2006. Antoine Walker was a good player. Go look how he performed in the East finals in 2006. He was a good player for them. He was. He was a good player for them. So, yeah, I, I definitely don't agree. that Antoine Walker wasn't even on my radar when it comes to players, most hated players on the Miami Heat, when we're talking about Kyle Lowry. Like, the guys you think about, you think of Whiteside, you think of Dion Waiters. I, for me, like, it's, it's not close. Uh, like, and they were saying yesterday, Mashburn... Here's the thing with Mashburn. Mashburn would get, like, Mashburn would get a lot of heat during the season, no pun intended. Like, Mashburn and Eddie Jones was kind of the same thing. They were a whipping boy for the fan base, right? But the hating Mashburn, like, the being angry at Mashburn only happened once he, once he was done being on the heat. Meaning, he passed up the shot to Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon bricked the free throw line jumper in game seven in 2000. Season was over. It was the last time Mashburn ever played for the Heat. So after he passed up that shot, then you hated him. He wasn't on the team ever again. Lowry is still on the team, unfortunately. So Mashburn, nah, it's not on my radar. And by the way, Mashburn's still got love for the Heat. Mashburn's at a lot of the games, man. Think what you want about Mashburn. Clearly has love for the Heat. He's got tickets right under the bench there. You think Kyle Lowry is going to have anything nice to say about Miami. Have you ever seen him in the community? Does he ever do interviews? Has he done shit since he's been here? Do you think he's going to have anything to say about the anything nice to say about the Miami Heat when he's done playing here? Do you think he's ever going to come to games and sit in the stands and enjoy a game when he's not playing here anymore? Please. So no. Mashburn is not even on the radar when we're talking about Kyle Lowry. Can't do it. Can't do it. All right. I already gave you a big game, not a big game. You know about that. But you're also thinking to yourself right now, Zaslow, what, what if I want some time with my family? What if I want to go out and just, you know, what if I, what if I got to get in a good flick? I don't know what to see. Let's do big movie or not a big movie. Come on. Big movie or not a big movie. Every Friday now, you guys know how it works. Here's what we got this week. Big movie or not a big movie. <coughs> Operation fortune this movie is an action slash comedy it's rated r it's out in theaters today that's right it stars jason statham aubrey plaza 
Josh Hartnett. Where the hell has he been? Carrie Elwes. Hugh Grant. This is a great cast. Let's see what this movie's about. It's rated R. It's got language and violence. <laughs> it's a Guy Ritchie film, like Guy Ritchie. All right. In the film, super spy Orson Fortune, played by Statham, must track down and stop the sale of a deadly new weapons technology wielded by billionaire arms broker Greg Simmons. He's played by Hugh Grant. Reluctantly teamed with some of the world's best operatives, Fortune and his crew recruit Hollywood's biggest movie star, played by Josh Harnett, very handsome, to help them on their globe-trotting undercover mission to save the world. Okay, I see you. I see you, Operation Fortune. Rotten Tomatoes media score, 57%. Not great, but above average. Audience score, 100%. This is a big movie. I love everything Jason Statham does. I love everything that Guy Ritchie does. I love Aubrey Plaza. At this, Where's Josh Hartnett be, been? I'm into this movie. That's a big movie. All right, next up. This one is called What We Do Next. All right. This movie is rated, hmm, I don't see a rating. It's a drama, all right? It came out in theaters, limited release, today. It stars Corey Stahl. He was MODOK in Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Karen Pittman, Michelle Ventimiglia. Here's what the movie's about. It's a drama. I already told you that. Here's what it's about. When Elsa Mercado is released from prison after serving 16 years for killing her father, New York City Councilman Sandy James and corporate attorney Paul Jenkins are forced to grapple with their involvement in the original crime. What We Do Next is a timely emotional thriller sitting at the intersection of race, class, and criminal justice. Rotten Tomatoes media score, 100%. There's no audience score yet. I gotta tell you, this movie sounds interesting to me. I'm going big movie. I like the sound of this. Now, I'm not gonna see it in theaters. I'm not gonna kid you here. But... I'll see that movie when it starts to stream. All right, big movie or not a big movie? This movie is called Creed 3. It is out in theaters today. It is rated PG-13. It's got some strong language. It's got intense action. It's got violence. It's a drama. It's directed and starred by Michael B. Jordan. Wow, he's directing it, good for him. It also stars Tessa Thompson and Wood Harris and, like, the next big star in Hollywood, Jonathan Majors. Yeah, that's right. He was, he's Kang in, in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. He's a big, big star now. All right. Here's what it's about. After dominating the boxing world, Adonis Creed has been thriving in both his career and family life. When a childhood friend and former boxing prodigy, Damien, <coughs> excuse me, resurfaces after serving a long sentence in prison, he is eager to prove that he deserves his shot in the ring. The face-off between former friends is more than just a fight. To settle the score, Adonis must put his future on the line to battle Damien, a fighter who has nothing to lose. The Rotten Tomatoes media score is a certified fresh 86%. Audience score, 96%. You know this is a big movie. There is no way that Creed 3 is not fantastic. I can't wait to see it. Finally, I got one more for you here. This movie is called Chris Rock Selective Outrage. It is starring Chris Rock. It's his newest stand-up special. It's on Netflix, and for the first time ever, it is streaming live on Netflix tomorrow night. That's right. Chris Rock makes comedy history performing stand-up in real time for Netflix's first global live streaming event. This is huge for a couple reasons. Most notably because it's a live stream comedy show for the first time ever on Netflix. Also because you know this is the show where he's finally going to talk about Will Smith. I saw Chris Rock within the last year. He has not talked about Will Smith at all on this last tour. This is the one where he's getting paid to do this, where he's going to talk about Will Smith. Tomorrow night, Chris Rock, Selective Outrage. That's a big movie. And that right there is another edition of Big Movie or Not a Big Movie.
Yeah! All right! What? This is, a, this is a big show. We got a lot going on here today. That's what I'm talking about. So you know what? Let's get right at it here. You know what time it is, how we wrap up every show, also on Fridays. Let's get to big deal or not a big deal. All right, big deal or not a big deal, we make sure we touch on all the stories, sports or not, that we have not hit on so far. Let's start things off with big deal or not a big deal. Tomorrow afternoon, I just gave you a big movie or not a big movie. One of the movies that was not on it, I'm taking my family to see tomorrow, Cocaine Bear. Everybody knows this bear finds cocaine that fell off a plane, obviously they were smuggling it, the bear eats it, and it becomes crazy. It's directed by Elizabeth Banks, which is weird and funny. Cocaine bear taking my family tomorrow, that's a big deal. I'm into that. Big deal or not a big deal. So, coming up for my son's spring break today, uh, today, this month, I'm taking my younger son Jordan, we're going to Orlando for a few days, we're going to take him to Universal Studios, he's never been he also wants to go to an Orlando Magic game. He thinks it'd be cool to go see an NBA game in another arena. So I bought tickets to see the Magic, all right? They're actually they're playing the Wizards that week. All right, fine. Well, now I'm getting emails every other day from the Orlando Magic ticket department. They want to sell me season tickets. Listen, I'm driving up just for a few days. We're taking in a game. I don't want season tickets to the Orlando Magic. This is not a big deal. Not a big deal. Big deal or not a big deal? Last night... The Dallas Mavericks, they finally won a game for the second time in six tries. The Mavericks, they beat the Sixers last night for the second time in six tries. They won a game with Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic playing together. But they made history last night because Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic, they became the first duo in NBA history to score 40 points in the same game while hitting six plus threes in the same game. They won 133-126. They're never going to defend and if that's how they're going to win games, is by historic 40-point, 6-3-pointer nights, this team ain't going anywhere. So I'm going not a big deal. And finally, I got one more for you here. Last night, NBA on TNT, Shaq made his return. He was out sick last week. The guys were busting balls. Let's hear his return. Charles, isn't it great to see... The recovery made by Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, he missed last Thursday. Be back in I here, know. man. You are I'm so man, worried. Man, I, I know. We call right the hospital there. every day, checking on you. He's a gamer, Thank man. You, man. to come out. You, you are. Chuck, I heard what you said. Man. Yeah. I heard what you said. Wait, if you heard, how did you hear what we said? If it you was, was sick, not a, it's so a you're trying to be. You are trying to tell us it was not a hookah related sickness. Okay, it's good to. Got his light on. Carolina blue. Yeah. If you come to the hookah bar, not. I, I tell you what, there's no hey, chance. Hey, hey, I tell you what, bar. you get Ernie to the hookah bar, I'll come to the hookah bar, <laughs> no, right. and I'll record it. That ain't it's happening. And, and you and you've dealt with snow in L.A. Snow come in LA. on, got man! My, I got what my it? plane diverted. Long, yeah. We didn't go to we didn't long we didn't go to Wyoming. They took us to Vegas. Yeah. I was happy. I was like <laughs> a night in Vegas. Yes, indeed. Yes, well, indeed. Never, this, you can never show, go wrong with that. This oh. night is is better than a night in Vegas. It's uh, like divert me, Ernie. Ernie, top kissing, but. This is not better than a night in Vegas. <laughs> There's nothing better than a night in Vegas. Depends on what you like. Uh so I'm going big deal. Love that Shaq is back. Love that he's healthy. Come on now, all right? You know that's the best crew. NBA and TNT. Busting balls. Love having that group back together. Best studio show in the history of the world. That's a big deal that the guys were back together. And that right there is another addition. A big deal or not a big deal. Hey, this has been a really great week of shows. Really fun week. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us another week here on Zazlo Show 2.0. Thanks for all the support after yesterday, my appearance on the Levitard Show. It's really been overwhelming, like I said. The reaction's been fantastic. I didn't expect it. Make sure you like, you rate, you comment. However you're listening to the Zazlo Show 2.0 podcast, tell all your friends, tell all your family. Listen tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. to noon, Sirius XM Fight Nation Channel 156. I'll be hosting Busted Open. I hope that you're listening to that. And of course, also, come see me tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to be out there with Johnny Cuba, Broward Meat and Fish, grand opening their Margate location. Newest sponsor to Zaslo Show 2.0. going to have all kinds of samples from Johnny Cuba there, along with everything Broward Meat and Fish has going on. But I'm also going to be giving away a couple pair of tickets to tomorrow night's Heat Hawks game. So if you want them, come on out. I'll hook you up. We'll talk to you guys on Monday on Zaslo Show 2.0. 
You know what that means.